Today's video is brought to you by Squarespace. From websites and online stores to tools for marketing and analytics, Squarespace is your one-stop shop to run your business online. What is going on guys? Behind me is my 911. It's a 1977 that I found in a barn about 30 minutes from my house on a chicken farm. It was underneath a sheet and my wife actually bought it for me as my dream car. If you haven't seen that video, it'll be at the end of this one. You can check it out, it's pretty cool. When I bought this car, I was told that it did not run, that the engine was seized. Well, since then, we've gotten the engine to turn over pretty easily by hand. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. <laughs> yes, dude. We've gone through and washed the entire thing and, and worked on getting the smell of animal out of the inside of it and now it's time to try and get it to run now I feel pretty confident we can get this thing to run maybe not well but I think we're gonna be able to get it to run I've done a couple of pre checks just to see how close we could be and it seems like we could be pretty close the big question marks are gonna be spark and fuel do we have anything happening from our distributor to our spark plugs and are we actually getting any fuel I've only turned the key on this thing once just to get it into the accessory position and I did not hear a fuel pump so it's likely we're gonna have to address that but either way, the goal is for this video, and I guess I can say that this video, we are going to get this car to run. If this video is coming out later than planned, it's because we didn't get it to run on time, but we are gonna get this car to at least run for a little bit in this video. It should be really exciting. Check it out. Okay, we found some sweet nectar of life. Manna from heaven, sweet nectar of life. I was actually getting kind of worried because there are some gas stations that have shut down, but luckily we're still pretty early in this whole thing and there's still a few that have some. So we've got plenty of gas, we just filled the truck up and just filled up this five gallon container. That should be enough to get our Porsche running. All right, so this car has not run in like five years. We pumped all of the old gas out, and now we're gonna put new gas in it. But before we do that, I'm gonna put in a bottle of Tecron High Mileage. Now we're working with Tecron now, which is super exciting, and their high mileage is formulated specifically for cars with high mileage. So anything over 75,000 miles is good for the high mileage formulation. And basically what it does is it helps kind of blow out clean out some of the carbon deposits that build up over the course of the life of your engine. It's gonna help the engine run cleaner. It's gonna restore fuel economy. Overall, it's just gonna be better for your engine. And so we're gonna run this in here with our first tank. And then after that, we'll switch to the regular Tecron on 3,000 mile intervals to okay. keep the gas in the car and keep the engine, more importantly in the car, running super clean. Drink up, little buddy. This is exciting. This is a good moment. I mean, I don't know if this, I don't know how long it's going to be before this gas gets used, but hopefully not very. For you guys that were wondering, yes, the cat that, has, that was in my shop, if you watch Built 2, you'll know that there's been a cat that frequents my shop, and I came in the other day and there were cat footprints on my car. And not just on my car, but on the 911. I've used three different website providers in my time on YouTube, and I am back at Squarespace, the one I originally started with. There's a lot of reasons for that, but one of them is the shop feature. I've got these MG lever shocks here, and these things run about 500 bucks for a new set, and they're just sitting in my garage collecting dust. I don't need them, but I would love for them to go to somebody who is building an MG that does need some. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull my phone out, and I'm gonna open up the Squarespace app. And I'm gonna click on pages, and I can go to my shop. Now in the shop, there's this little plus button. We'll hit that, and that opens up a new window. So I'm gonna write my description. I've already written it to save you guys some time. And then we just snap some pictures of the parts, put in our price, put in our quantity, which is one, and then we can make this thing live. With that, this is listed on the site. If you'll go to my website now, you'll see things like the head for the Honda that's completely remanufactured, the new old stock cam for that same car. I've got some MR2 taillights up there with the little center section, all kinds of stuff. And as I'm going through cleaning, I'm gonna keep adding parts into my shop. Squarespace has made it super easy for me to just upload one thing for sale. And we'll be able to save these rare parts for the cars that they belong on. 
If you yourself are running a small business and need some help online, check out squarespace.com. They are set up for people like us that are making a living doing what we love. You can use this link right here, which will give you a discount that I'll detail right here, so I make sure I get it right. And that will get you started on your Squarespace journey and designing your very own, very useful website. Thank you so much to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to it. Spider. <sighs> this one's tight too. What's really cool though, is you would expect a car that's been sitting this long that doesn't run uh, to have really dirty oil and our oil you can actually see it it's clear you can see through it but you can see this stuff looks there you go like fresh so I don't know if it got a fresh oil change before it stopped working but man everything is just looking looking pretty good for us right now Okay, so we've had a little bit of a bout with our oil filter. We weren't filming it because it was an oil filter, and uh, we've crushed it. So there's a few <laughs> tricks you can use to get the oil filter off. That's the screwdriver trick where you hammer a screwdriver all the way through it and turn it. I started with that one, and um, it turned it just a bit and then tore the oil filter to pieces. I don't know if that's an age thing or what, but it did. So Pat went and got a, uh, a filter wrench. Um, that didn't fit, but we smashed the filter down and jammed it on there. And now we should be able to get this thing off, but I think we're only gonna get one shot at it. So I wanted to film. And we'll show you this filter when we uh, when we get out of here, but let's see. We're gonna use all the leverage here. You can see I chipped the paint trying to get this filter off, so here we go. spinning at all. Okay, that felt like it did something. It did. You know those YouTube channels that everything goes right and all the working on cars look super fun? This is not one of those videos. No, no it's Or one of those YouTube channels, I guess. Uh, nope, no, nothing. Are we sure that this thing actually spun? It's just frustrating that like the thing that is holding me from keeping me from starting my car is an oil filter. An oil filter. Okay, so we're having some trouble with the oil filter, of all things, but that's how it goes with these old cars. Um, we have come to the conclusion that a gorilla put this one on, and because that's the case, we can't get it off. We've tried every trick that I know and destroyed the filter in the process. You guys can take a look for yourself. It's pretty rough. It's rough. So we found this filter wrench that we think is gonna work. It opens up like this, and then as you loosen it, it tightens down. So I think even with the destroyed filter, this is either gonna totally rip the end off of it, which is kind of okay, uh, or it's gonna actually take it off, which is obviously more okay. All right, I think. I need a glove, dude. I'm gonna cut my So, this is what gave us so much trouble. You can see it's totally twisted, but we got it off. It was just really, really tight. That's what it used to look like. So, we're gonna throw this one on, then we'll actually be able to put oil in this thing. All right, we finally got the filter off and it's time to put new oil in. So we're gonna be using this Havilland 10W40. There's a big argument on the Porsche forums of whether you should use 1040 or 2050 or 1060, which is a new oil that uh, Porsche makes. And we're going with the 10W40. Now we are working with Havilland now and I'm super excited to show you guys their Smart Change oil. This is actually really cool. It uses 70% less plastic and a cardboard box. Inside you've got well, it's basically a bag of oil, but you pop this tab, slide the oil in, and all of a sudden, your box has transformed into an oil container. On the back, you've got this little pull handle that pops out as well so that you can hold it. And the best part, in my opinion, is that these boxes hold six quarts of oil instead of your traditional five quarts in your typical plastic jugs. And that's good for the Porsche because it holds 13 quarts of oil. At least that's what I've heard. Now, according to what we can find online, it's 
you're supposed to put in nine quarts to start, so that's six quarts out of this one, and then half of this box, and then I guess fill it up until the dipstick reads full. I assume that means that you can't always get all of the oil out, but I don't really know. But either way, we've got plenty of oil to try to fill this thing out. Now, another thing I had to do is make this. This is a funnel with a garden hose attached to the bottom of it because of where the fill point is. I don't know how you're supposed to fill this thing. Now I'm sure there's probably a very fancy tool and or funnel that works better than this, but this is going to work enough for us. I do need to trim it down. And there we go. Now we have a funnel with a hose that's going to allow us to fill this thing pretty easily. I could probably Google and find a better way to do this, but uh, we're going to do it this way. <laughs> we're not lying. This oil does not glug. It's just a smooth pour. And it's amazing that it took us this long to get here. But I mean, look at that. Look at that. That is nice. It's something I didn't even know I wanted. <laughs> this is gonna take a while though. Another thing you may be wondering is how do you check your level? There's another window right here. You push through and pull out. And you've got this level indicator of two, about two quarts left, about one quart left. So you can check your level just like you do any other oil container. Pretty cool. All right, and that is about nine quarts of oil. That's a lot of oil. And I don't think we're done, but I think that's enough to try to start the car based on the internet. Whoop. All right, nine quarts of oil in the Porsche. For you guys that are new, I've always called Porsches, Porsche is, Porsches, Porsche. The uh, I always leave off the uh. I'm trying to get better. If it bothers you, I'm sorry, I'm trying. All right, so we just finished putting in our nine quarts of Haviland 10W40. We've got our Tecron high mileage in there with our five gallons, I think, of gasoline. It's time to start the car. Now, I've done a few pre-checks to see if this is gonna work. I think everything is functional that I know of, except I don't know about the fuel pump. So Here goes nothing. Windows still work, that's cool. Much feels good. Starter works. That's huge. Okay, but but we need more power for sure. And I don't know if we're getting fuel. Yeah, bub. That is Huge, huge. Okay, so starter works. That's good. I don't know if the fuel works. And I need to check and see. I think I might have actually had a spark plug pulled out. So we'll check that out as well. But I definitely need to charge my jump box because it doesn't have enough power to get this thing to start for sure. There's hope. All right, we're gonna try it one more time today. <laughs> And then we'll come back tomorrow if it doesn't run, which I don't think it's going to, but we're gonna try it. If it doesn't run today, uh, we'll be back tomorrow to do some diagnosis on spark and fuel and all that stuff. I don't hear a fuel pump, so I'm thinking I'm probably not getting fuel, uh, which could be as simple as a fuse or as a complex as a fuel pump. There's gotta be a reason this thing didn't run though, right? Like, it's not just gonna start up probably, hopefully. Maybe it will, and if it does, I'll be really excited. Let's try it. You ready, bud? Yeah. All right, let's see. Yeah. Okay, so it's a new day. We finished yesterday with getting the Porsche to turn over. My sons both came here and started playing in the mud and got super dirty. So we had to go home and get them cleaned up. And I figured it was a good place to stop because there's a whole rabbit trail we're about to go down and try to get this thing to run. Now this is fresh gasoline. This is really good stuff. We use this as cutting oil uh, for one of the projects that we're doing right now. This is orange Gatorade. It is tasty to drink. This is the gasoline that came out of the Porsche. It doesn't look like gasoline and it looks a lot closer to orange Gatorade. Here's an example. Look at that. Now what I'm hoping is that there's an additive in this gas that someone put in it before they stored it that made it this color, like Stabil for example. Um, I'm not sure how likely that is, but I'm hopeful. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with our spark because I feel like the spark is probably okay. I think the issue is gonna be with fuel 
and uh, we'll get into that when we get there. But before we get into anything, we're gonna start and check our spark. First spark plug out, hardest spark plug out, at least I think. Get you guys a look at this thing. So spark plugs that are being run should be kind of a light brown color on the end. This is obviously very wet with oil, uh, which isn't surprising since this car sat for so long. So it's likely we'll get new plugs today. Um, definitely, I don't see why we wouldn't while we're doing all this. But what we're gonna check first before we get new plugs, go out and buy parts, is are we getting spark to this? Is there spark making it from the distributor through our wires and into our actual spark plug? If so, that's great news for us. We'll check every single one just to make sure. And if we are, that means we can just replace the spark plugs, throw them back in, and that system is functional. We can move on to our fuel. What I'm gonna do is uh, put the spark plug into the coil right here and we're gonna ground that out right here on whatever this is Maybe the steering pump. I'm not sure and when he turns the car over it'll spark if everything's good Yep We're definitely sparking dude. It's good. It's a good thing. It is a good thing Something that I learned a little while ago when I first started getting into getting old cars to run is the acronym acrostic, I think is actually what it is, called FAST. That's fuel, air, spark, and timing. If you have those four things, your car will run. Now, for our car, we know we have spark now. We're gonna go ahead and check all six spark plugs just to make sure that everything looks good across the board. And we're gonna go ahead and replace our spark plugs as well because it's a wear item. And while we're in there, it just makes sense to go ahead and replace them instead of trying to get this thing to start with old oily spark plugs. So spark, check. Air, I've checked as much as I can. Our filter looks good. All of our air induction parts to our CIS system looks really good. So as far as I can tell, just by hand, our air looks like it's gonna be okay. Timing, I'm assuming is okay. It may not be, but I think that it should be fine. As far as I know, this car ran when it was parked, and so it makes me think the timing is probably okay. At least good enough for us to start the car. And then we have fuel. But if we know that our air, spark, and timing are good, that narrows it down to fuel for us, and we can just start going through our fuel system, starting from the front and working our way back uh, to figure out why our car may or may not be getting the right amount of fuel. Once we have those, it should fire and it should run on its own. The internet says that if we jump our relay, then, what did it say, 87A to 30? Yeah. So, the eight, so 30 is gonna be our supplied power. So if we jump our supplied power to 87A, it should, with the key turned on, turn the fuel pump on if the fuel pump is functioning. So this is gonna tell us if our fuel pump actually works. If we do this, then that's great. We'll know that the relay's bad and that solves a lot of problems. All right, so turn the key to the on. There's a little pan that covers the, some of the suspension parts. I mean, I haven't seen any mice in here the whole time I've been here. Hey, I can climb down. Oh, that is a really heavy. Oops. What is that piece of stuff in there? Oh, man. Did you find the fuel pump? There it is, right there. It's got leaves on it. Okay, I just got back from the auto parts store. Now, I went to my local auto parts store and asked for a fuel pump. and. I, mainly because of time. I wanted to get this video out for you guys and I thought that I might be able to get the right one. Now we went and got one. It took two days to get here, which is pretty good and uh, did get us in time for the video if it works. But the problem is it's way smaller than the one that's in there right now. Now, all I've ever read on Porsche forums is that you're supposed to use OE type parts. Like the Bosch unit is the one that you're supposed to use on this. And we're using import direct. So I'm not super confident. Uh, I did talk to the guy that I bought this from or the store that I bought this from. They said if it doesn't work out that I can bring it back and get a refund and order the Bosch unit. But for our sake and for this video's sake, I hope that it does. Now it came with this little sleeve for mounting it uh, that I assume is an isolator, but I also wonder if, if it's with this sleeve the same size as the stock Porsche one. Like maybe it's just like an upgraded or newer kind of tech that makes it smaller and still pushes out the same amount of flow. I don't know, but what we're gonna do is we'll pull the other one off. I'll show you the two next to each other so you can see what I'm seeing. Um, and then we'll put this one in. And if it works, I'll be surprised. Uh, but also we may have a running car. All right, so we've got to clamp off the fuel line and I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this underneath. So I wanted to show you what I'm doing is taking some vice grips. We're gonna wrap uh, a little bit of duct tape around them. That'll protect our fuel line a little bit. We'll clamp the fuel line off and that will let us take the fuel pump off without spilling a bunch of gas everywhere. 
Oh, I think I just broke that. Broke what? That fuel line. That was so stupid. That was the one, the one thing I did not need to break. Here. Perfect. Can you get me a razor blade? And I broke. So it is broken for sure. I think so. All right, so we had a little, uh-oh, okay? Basically, the soft line cracked and started spilling fuel everywhere. That's why we have respirators on. Hard line, I think, broke when I was trying to loosen it. It's pretty rusty. Soft line, no big deal. We will fix it. It's easy. I've got some at the house. The hard line, I think, may be a Porsche specific line. I'm not sure, and I won't know until I get it out. Which could be a major bummer, because I'm trying to finish this video today, trying to get this thing running today, and I just want to hear it run. But, if we can't get one of those lines, we're out of luck. So, that's a bummer. We're going to have to figure that out. But I went ahead and cut this line. I've got it clamped off, so the vice grip clamp did work. Now I'm going to uh, crawl up under here. I'm going to lay some cardboard down so I'm not laying in gasoline. Crawl up under here and undo my final bolt, and this thing should pull out. And we'll be able to kind of see what's going on with that fuel line. Man. Hindsight is 2020. Where's that? I gotta figure out where that goes. Time to Google. <sighs> There's our other pump. So you can see how much smaller this one is. Our high pressure line is busted. Um, so I'm gonna do a little bit of Googling, a little bit of searching, and see if there's any way for me to get one today. Uh, yeah, and we'll, we'll be back. So it goes pin out. Point, shoot. Don't let me catch myself on fire. Okay, hold on. What do you think the odds are that something actually catches on fire? You know, I would throw them out there, but I just don't have... I, I, I hate being responsible for your safety. You don't need to work here, dude. <laughs> the internet's responsible for my safety, but it's all in retrospect. Like, they'll get mad at me for doing something unsafe, but it's already happened. You oh know, you're here in the moment, so... You're here for them. If you weren't here, I'd be doing this by myself under the car with no fire extinguisher, so. Well, they'll be happy. They'll be happy. Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. I don't think that we're, I don't think that you're going to be necessary, but just be ready, you know? I think the most that we'll see will be like, if it does, if it catches, it'll catch and burn off. I don't think it's going to like, you know. I'm going to shoot but it, it. But it may, and if it does, just shoot it with a fire extinguisher. Boom, beautiful. All right, so what we just did, can you see me? Oh yeah. So there is, the way these lines are manufactured is there's a second, there's like, they're manufactured in pieces basically. And there's a front piece that goes up over the steering rack and into your fuel tank. And that piece is crimped on with some sort of machine crimp that is a one-time use, only replace kind of deal. But the fittings are barbed fittings, like what you would see on any kind of fuel line. So what I'm going to do is remove these with the Dremel, which was super sketch, but it worked. It was fine. Um, and we're going to put on a clamped style hose. Now I asked a friend who's a Porsche specialist about this. He said he sees about 50% of every Porsche that he works on has this modification done. That doesn't mean it's right. It doesn't mean it's good. It's not factory, so this is not a tutorial. It's just you watching me do what I'm deciding to do. So if you decide to do this, it's at your own risk, yada, 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 all that good stuff. But what we're going to do is replace this with hose clamps, and that'll be a removable piece now. And um, we'll just see how it does. I'm going to monitor it super close and just see what happens. But according to the forums, it works okay. So, back to the auto parts store. We'll get some fittings and stuff and try to get this thing adapted to our 911. And then maybe, if everything works and all the stars are aligned, it will start. We'll see. So, I have learned a lesson in this endeavor, and that is that it's always worth it to just order the parts that are rare and wait for them to get here. What we've created is a contraption, and uh, it's going to work, I think, but it's not. Uh, is, is, it's not what I would have liked to do. So what we've got is a fitting here. It's just a barb, straight barb, out of the pressure side. I'm also using kind of pretty high quality worm gear clamps. I think that's important for this job, and probably for every job, because the cheap ones, 
I, they don't work. This is our feed. You can see it's bigger, so I had to make this adapter that goes from one eighth to one quarter. It fits really nice on the one quarter, and then this should fit really nice onto the tank. It's only actually gotta be about this long, but we'll make all our cuts underneath there so I don't cut it too short, because that would be bad. I am so frustrated with myself because the fittings that I needed came with the pump. Dumb, just dumb, just dumb. Anyway, so I went and bought all those fittings and came up with that kind of not correct way to install the pump just to find out the fittings were already there with washers. So I gotta pull the pump back out. Last night we got the fuel pump in and then I needed a couple of clamps, some worm gear clamps, so I gotta go pick some of those up. Then we'll cut to trying to start this thing for the first time with a working fuel pump. Let's just go ahead and get there because you guys try to wait. There's gas in it. We put gas back in it. It's not leaking. Check underneath and make sure we're not leaking. You guys can go check too. Dry? Dry. Good, all right. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. Okay, let me put a hat on. <sighs> well, yeah, maybe. <laughs> all right. A key here. All right, so what we should hear if we did this correctly, is we should hear the fuel pump cut on, assuming our relay is good, and I think our relay is good. Okay, here we go. Uh, we should plug our battery up, like I said. We should plug the battery up. <laughs> I got, my heart was just like dropping. Okay, we'll throw that on there. Saw some sparks, so that's good. I feel like, no, we don't need to lower it yet. Uh, but that's gonna, no, it's not gonna, will it? I don't know, okay. Here we go, this key is already twisted. That's no good. I don't hear it. I hear a little tick, but I don't know if that's the fuel pump or not. Sure, we're in neutral. A break is pulled. Okay, here we go. Okay, so I learned. What are you thinking? A test. We're gonna test and see if we've got fuel going to the injectors. Now, one of these is the fuel distributor for our injection system, and we should be able to push on it. And I think it's this one. This looks like all of these will go to the fuel line, so we should be able to push on it somewhere. Or maybe we push on this and the fuel should come out. Whoa. <gasps> okay, listen closely, everyone. You're gonna hear fuel. It's on the lav. Well, no, you'll you're gonna hear fuel. fuel. Listen. Oh, we've got fuel. Okay, all right, we've got fuel. We've got fuel. We've got fuel. We've got fuel. Does that mean the pump works? That means the pump is working, I think. Let's see, we'll do it when we're done. Here, let me go to the front. Yeah. You can something do that now. Here, go, let me go to the front and you press that thing again. What? You press that thing again, I'm at the front now. One more time, ready? It's leaking. Okay, that's good to know. All right. Oh yes, dude, that's, we're, we're moving. We're moving in the right direction. Thank goodness. It's a little bit heartbroken for a second. All right, so we're leaking fuel, which is good. That means that would keep us from running because we wouldn't be getting the right amount. So well, we're not leaking a lot. But we're leaking. We are leaking. Any leaking fuel is bad. It's a tiny bit on the high pressure side. Let's see. Okay. We can fix that. I didn't tighten that one up super, super tight. So let's see. Do you like how I knew that that was the high pressure side? Yeah, that was a. Uh, that was good, dude. Oh, I wonder. I wonder if it's coming from. You're right, just a tiny leak, that's good. We have some right here too? Nope. Okay. Okay. Can we crank it? We're gonna try. <laughs> let's go, let's go! <laughs> yes! Yes! 
Yes! Yes! <laughs> Woo! Randy said, dude, be ready. When you start, it's going to be a smoke show. And he was right. Oh. <coughs> Woo! Yeah! Yeah! You're going to be clipping on that mic so hard. That. Mm. I'm like, I'm like angry excited. We just, we freaking did it. We freaking did it. I cannot believe it. Holy crap. Why does it smoke like that? Oh, thank you. Huh? Why does it smoke like that? Just let me like have that? a moment with this thing. I'm so happy. Dude, I'm so happy. I cannot believe, I cannot believe that it runs. I can't believe it runs. Okay, let's clean this crap out. Are you putting it down? Yeah. Before the, before like, okay, the C10. You guys that have been here for a while, you remember the C10 truck. That's the first car I've ever bought that just like didn't run. I mean, it ran, but it would drive like a foot. Before that, I always stayed away from these things. It's so smoky in here. Uh, yeah. Fog of war, man. And uh, I always stayed away from non-runners. I would just buy cars that needed to be painted or whatever. And uh, that's, that's what I would do. I would paint them and make them pretty or whatever. But I, would, I was scared of this kind of stuff. But we did the C10 and then the Corolla, which was a similar kind of situation. It ran sort of. And then uh, the MG, which was one that hadn't run in 30 years. And after doing those three, that was just started last year. I feel more confident with this kind of stuff. I kind of understand what's going on. This could not be good to breathe in. I don't know, it's probably not that bad. It's just oil, which is just dinosaurs. And dinosaurs are organic, right? So. So why is it broken? Because it sat for so long, so oil's in the cylinders. And how do you get it out? Burn it, run it. Okay, so you just need to We're just gonna smoke this whole place out. Maybe it'll take out the uh, rat poop smell. We can, move, we can move it outside. Well, old Porsches are supposed to smell like oil, so. From what I hear, this is just spinning in the... I'm, I'm just gonna fill this place up with smoke. I could not be happier that this place is filled with smoke right now. Huh? To burn all the smoke off. Oh, okay. I mean, we'll see, it. you wanna see if it moves? Yes. Okay. Also, for you guys that know what we're still filming, keep filming. Okay, I'm still filming. Okay, that's it. Uh, I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> Woo! All right, uh, for you guys at home may not know, I, uh, you wouldn't know, because I did it today. Uh, I ordered some transmission fluid. Uh, the internet said the best transmission fluid for this car was like Simcoe 201 or something like that. I don't know, never heard of it. Um, so I got some of that, we're gonna put that in here. Um, yeah, we're gonna put that in here. Mainly because when I had the MR2, I'm talking really fast, I'm really excited. Uh, when I had the MR2, it had some transmission issues, didn't want to shift for well. It was like, <sighs> I gotta call you back, Shane. Shane, if you're watching this, I'm sorry, dude, but I'll call you back. Um, when I had the MR2, it had some shifting issues from third gear. You couldn't shift down to third while the car was running. And, uh, and I read online that Redline Lightweight Shockproof fixes that, and I put it in, and I never had an issue with the MR2 again. And so these high-end gear oils, I am a huge believer in. And this Simcoe is kind of the same thing, I think, for the Porsche 915 transmission, which is the one that came from, like, I don't know, 74 to, like, 80-something, um, which is what I have. So we're going to put that in there. It'll be good. It'll be here in, like, a day. Uh, but if it's full, if we check and it's full, I gotta get insurance on this car still, and then we can drive it. It's not worth the risk. <clears throat> Hang on, it's Chase. Hey! Okay, well, I'm standing in a fog in my garage because my Porsche just started. Can I call you back? Yeah. All right, see ya. Come to my house right now. In my house, come to my shop. <clears throat> See ya. All right. All right. Kyle. Kyle's the guy that helped me clean the car. He's coming. He told me not to start it without him, but I kind of forgot. I'm sorry, Kyle, but you're going to be over here and you'll get to see it. All right, let's do it. It's like, oh, it didn't even, it didn't even, it wants to run. 
It's not even smoking that bad. Not as bad as it was. Oh, I spoke too soon. There it comes. My hazards. That is lights. Okay. So I'm pretty sure I don't have throttle control, which is an issue. <coughs> I'm having trouble breathing, which is another issue. Let's see if our fuel pump is still doing things. Here. Here. Oh, yeah. You think we're oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, I think it's, we've got a vacuum leak somewhere. Based on what I know about engines, it sounds, and it ran really good at first, well, really good. It ran at first, and now it doesn't, it won't hold idle. I'm guessing the idle is trying to step down uh, from the high idle. <clears throat> and because of that, there's a vacuum leak somewhere, which is believable and understandable for this old of a car that's been sitting. And uh, we've got to track that vacuum leak. If we could get the car to run, it'd be a lot easier, though. <clears throat> I'm trouble breathing in here. Um, um, nah. So we've just got to figure out where it's leaking. I need to, I've got this book. Let me show you guys this book. Uh, okay. So when I was looking at buying por a, a Porsche, like, or when I first bought this one, I didn't really know much about them mechanically. I knew people really loved them. I knew people loved driving them and they're supposed to be this great car or whatever, but that's all. And um, yeah, and so here we go. This is what I want. Anyway, I got online and I really love workshop manuals. Um, ever since doing the Honda, just having torque specs and like, you know, procedures for different jobs. It's just so nice to have it in paper. I used to think that was kind of cheesy, like just pull it up on your phone, whatever. They're kind of hard to find on your phone. <clears throat> but with paper, you can go and, and it's just like, you can kind of remember where it is in the book. It just makes stuff so much simpler. So anyway, I'm not, this is obviously not a sponsorship, but it's just a really good book. If you have a 911, 101 projects for your Porsche 911, it goes through like everything. Um, but I've been using this a lot. And then I have another one called like rebuilding your 911 engine or something. Same guy writes them. And uh, they're both really good. I've read them through cover to cover like four times. And I'm super familiar with the car now, which is awesome without even actually working on it yet for real. Um, so what we're going to do, I think there was one on the CIS injection system. Yep, fuel system, CIS 95. So we'll go check this out. I, I know it says that, that, let's see, yeah. Vacuum is like the hardest, or not the hardest, but, but the thing that you have to worry about with this system. So what can go around CIS, that's plenty. CIS rotation reliability. So here's what happened. Basically, you can see it's still smoking a lot. There's tons of oil all over the engine. So as the engine gets warmer, it's like sizzling. We'll let you hear it in a minute. It's pretty scary. So we've got a fire extinguisher just in case, but the car is just gonna warm up. I'm gonna let it idle. Basically what happened is I took the intake boot off a few weeks ago and uh, just to inspect some stuff. And when I put it back on, it folded up. So it created a vacuum leak. Now this whole fuel, this whole fuel injection system runs off vacuum. It all runs off vacuum. And so the fuel uh, distributor wasn't getting vacuum, which means the injectors weren't firing. So we fixed that leak and it's idling now. It's taking a little while to kind of even out, but it's settling down a ton. You can see it's just smoky. It's so smoky in there, but it is idling. So I'm just gonna let it get up to temperature and uh, we're gonna run it, I guess, until all that oil burns out. I'm gonna try to get this thing out of here because, uh, smoke. <laughs>
I can't believe it. But we did it. I have no words. This is just insanely cool. Now we gotta make it run well, but it does run, and that is such a huge victory. I just can't even explain it. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Thank you for following along with this build. We're gonna keep going, obviously, but this is such a huge, huge step. Ah, it's so cool. This just happened. I was pulling it back in. I don't know what that is, but man, that looks real bad. God, it looks so bad. Oh, victory is short-lived.